Yeah, check the audio. Check it, check it. One, two. Check it, check it. One, two. Today, I'm gonna show you how to dodge and burn using a Wacom tablet in Photoshop, and we're gonna give you a free brush that you can download. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're gonna show you a really great use for the Wacom tablet. Now, this is a pressure sensitive tablet, which means that it comes with this nice little pen and the harder or softer I press on the tablet, we can have different effects with our brushes in Photoshop. So we're gonna compare and contrast using the pressure sensitive tablet with using a mouse for dodging and burning. Now, if you want to follow along with this episode, you can actually download the sample image and the custom brush. Just click on this card right up here. You can download it for free on flurn.com. So here we have an image of a long exposure of fog rolling in through the mountains. It's a beautiful photo and kind of a perfect example for dodging and burning because we can add a little bit more light and shadow into these areas and just make them a little bit more three dimensional. Now, before we get into the dodge and burn, we need to make our brush and take advantage of our tablet. So we're gonna make a new layer and talk about the differences between a pressure sensitive tablet and a mouse. So I'm just gonna choose a red color here and we're gonna take a look at what I can get with my mouse. So just basically making a soft edge brush with my mouse, I'm able to paint along with my mouse. And as you can see, it's kind of just like puts down 100% of whatever I'm painting. I don't have a lot of like variation in the amount of paint that I can put down. One thing that you can do is lower the flow. So up here you have the opacity and flow. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my flow down to like 5% by hitting 0.5 up there. And here you can see as I paint a little bit over this area, it's gonna let a little bit of this brush come out. And if I go over it again and again, I can get a little bit more. So if all you have is a mouse, I do recommend using Flow, but I'm not able to change things like my brush size while I paint, and I'm a little bit limited on my flow. I'm still not getting as natural as a result as I would like. So the big deal here is we wanna be able to paint with the motion of these clouds, and all of that motion can be done with pressure sensitivity using a Wacom tablet. So now let's go ahead and build a custom brush for this image and this pressure sensitive tablet. By the way, you can use this custom brush for any dodging and burning in Photoshop. It doesn't have to be just this image, but we're gonna be taking advantage of a few different pressure sensitive options with my tablet. So let's go ahead and click on shape dynamics. We're gonna turn that on and right up here at the top where it says size jitter, I'm gonna change the control over here to pen pressure. Now here in our little preview, you can see that the softer I press with my pen, we're gonna make a smaller line, and the harder that I press, we get a larger line, and I'm gonna press soft again, and it gets smaller again. So again, just based on how hard I'm pressing, I can make this line smaller, or larger, or smaller again, or larger again, and I'm not changing the brush stroke. This is all within one brush stroke. Now in this case, I don't necessarily want it to get this small, so we're gonna bring up our minimum diameter just a little bit. Let's go ahead and clear what we have on there. So bringing up our minimum diameter, there we can see, maybe we'll bring it down a little bit more. So there we can see it gets smaller, I can make it larger and then smaller again. So here you can see, maybe we'll bring this down just a little bit more. I'm able to a little bit more accurately follow what's going on here in my image and I'm getting a lot more natural results already. Okay, let's go ahead and clear that again. Now, I'm still just like painting with the same flow the whole time, right? It's still the same visibility no matter where I paint. The stroke itself is looking a lot more natural, but I want it to like fade in and out. So that's gonna be done in transfer. So we're gonna click here on transfer, and then we're gonna click where it says flow jitter. You don't wanna add the jitter here, but the key is to add where it says control, change this to pen pressure. So now we can see that the lighter that I press, it's gonna put down less ink. The harder that I press, it's gonna put down more ink, and then it's gonna put less ink down. So again, let's just go to off. You can see it's pretty much the same. We're gonna change the flow jitter down to pen pressure, and then I can press light. It's not gonna put a lot of ink down. The harder I press, it's gonna put down more ink, okay? So we have a lot of control here 
And you can go ahead and change your minimum diameter and change your flow up here as well. So at this point, we're getting something that works quite a bit better and basically just imitates what we're going to be painting with. Now, of course, the flow is still set to 100%. So I can bring this flow down to about 20%. Maybe we'll make our brush a little bit larger. And look at this. I'm able to just beautifully paint in exactly what I want. There we go, following all of these cues that I'm getting from the image. Okay, there we go. And you can make your brush larger and smaller using your open and close brackets. There we go, beautiful. So right now I'm painting with red. Okay, I think that's pretty obvious, but the, you get the idea that wherever I'm painting, see how it really just looks so natural as it starts to come into my image? There we go. Just a very different effect than what we were able to get with the regular standard mouse or trackpad. So this is looking a lot more natural. I think we're looking great here. And don't forget, you can download this brush that we just made. Just click on this little card right up here. It'll take you to flurn.com for that download. Now to load it into Photoshop, just hit B for your brush tool, right click and go to this little gear icon here, and then go down to import brushes. And then you're gonna see in your download flurn dodge and burn .abr. This is the brush. Just go ahead and click on open and it's gonna load it right here on the very bottom. So you'll have access to this exact brush that we just made. So now it's time to translate this to dodging and burning. So we're gonna go ahead and make this layer invisible. And to start with, I'm gonna make a curves adjustment layer and simply make this a little bit brighter. Now it's visible everywhere now. So we're gonna hit Control or Command I to invert the layer mask. And then I'm just gonna simply paint white with my brush. So we want a keyboard shortcut here. We're gonna hold Control and Option and click and drag to the left and the right. That's gonna make your brush larger and smaller. And if you're on a PC, it's gonna be Control, Alt, right click and drag. So when you're gonna be painting a large area like over here, use a larger brush. For a smaller area, use a smaller brush. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and start painting this in. And as you can see, I'm basically lightening these areas where we're painting in. So slightly smaller brush for this area. There we go. And by painting this area in, I'm actually adding a little bit of definition and a little bit more shape into these areas. And as you can see, it's extremely natural. It doesn't look like something we're doing in Photoshop. It just blends perfectly into these images. There we go, this beautiful area with the clouds here. Just kind of highlight that. And then all of these little fine details are so nice. We're just kind of taking the existing light in this image and enhancing it just a little bit. There we go. So you can see I was able to just fade that from light right into dark. So easy. That's beautiful. We'll kind of come down here and do one more right down there. So by turning this off and on, we can see that I'm able to just enhance those light areas. So now we can do the same thing with burning. We're going to make another curves adjustment layer. There we are. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit darker. Now we're going to invert our layer mask again, because we don't want it to be visible everywhere. And now I'm going to paint with my brush tool in the dark areas. So it's going to make those dark areas a little bit darker. It's going to make them kind of stand out a little bit. And I'm able to add some definition as I paint in. There we go. So again, just remember to change your brush size. If you're working on a smaller area, like right up here, change your brush size to a slightly smaller brush, a larger area, simply use a larger brush. And I'm just painting on the layer mask. So we're painting white to make it visible and black to make it invisible. So if you mess up, don't worry. You All you have to do is paint black on that layer mask and it's gonna hide that area. And you can always go back to your dodge layer too. This is not something that you have to get perfect. You know, the first time you do this, you can always go back in here and make these changes at any point in time. This is really, really nice. So obviously we're working on a landscape image here but you can use these exact same principles on portraits or really any type of other images. And this brush is gonna work beautifully on any type of dodging and burning that you do. It's so nice. So let's go ahead and turn both of those layers off and on. We're gonna turn them off. So here's our before and the after. We're able to just add that definition 
in to this image. Now, you can always go back in here and change the value. So if I maybe say, ah, oh, that's too dark, too light, I can just double click right here on my curves and I could make this a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. I have so much control here. We'll go to this one and I can say, maybe make it less bright or I could even go darker if I wanted, but we're not gonna do that. There we go. I think that's looking fantastic. So let's go ahead and take a look at our before and after of these really natural results we were able to get using our pressure sensitive tablet and our custom brush. Here's our before and the after. So as you can see, we're able to create a very nice subtle dodge and burn that gives the image a little bit more three dimensionality and using our pressure sensitive tablet makes it look extremely natural as opposed to using a mouse, which doesn't give you a lot of control in terms of your pressure and your size. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to get more free videos from Flurn, go ahead and subscribe by clicking right up here. If you want to learn how to set up one of these Wacom tablets, click on this video. And if you want to learn more about amazing things you can do with your brush tool, click right up here. Thanks so much. I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.